Hi you guys, welcome to this live. Today I'm going to be interviewing a good friend of mine, uh, Mary Ellen. You might know her from her beautiful Instagram account. There she is. I'm gonna see, this is my first time adding someone. So there we go. Okay, so there she is. Oh my God. Hi. Hey. Hi, Mary Thank you so much for joining me and us here live. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, this is Mary Ellen, um, <laughs> real life goddess, uh, artisan, ceramicist, and how would you say, like, garden nymph? <laughs> Um, sure. Yeah. No, yeah. please. How would you um, say? Someone gave me the title like when I was 16 <laughs> as a garden goddess. So totally, you know, that hit home a long yeah. time ago. So I encourage everyone to go check out her Instagram to um, just see how she brings magic into her life through the garden. It's really inspiring. She's helped me with my garden and also her uh her teapots and her ceramic pieces are just incredible um i own some and i'm just in love so hello everyone who's joining today i invited mary ellen on to talk about entrepreneurship because it has been quite a journey for me and um this is going to be the first in hopefully a long series of interviews with artisans and other successful entrepreneurs at all stages of their business journey um to kind of just normalize the process and shed light on what this journey looks like for different people because it's so different um and there's this focus on profit in business and rightfully so but there's so much more to business and on like becoming an entrepreneur and developing your relationship with yourself in that area. Um, and so that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah. Is there anything that I missed that you would like to add to that introduction, Mary Ellen? Um, you, you, I mean, besides the fact that like we're really good friends. So Absolutely. I'm excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so many people are here. Hi, you guys. Okay. Hey everyone. Welcome, welcome. Um, okay, so tell me about your introduction to entrepreneurship, Mary Ellen. Um, I really believe that the intro to really this lifestyle um, <laughs> began like when I was a little girl and I was like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I know how to do it. I can, I know, I know, I know. Like my mom said that, that was one of the first things that came my mind, came out of my mouth is I know how to do it or whatever it is, you know? Um, and I, I honestly feel like entrep being an entrepreneur um, for some of us, like it's, it's a code that we're born with. It's a, download of of we have our own path to live and we have our own code to live by and um it's almost like a, the same essence of being a free spirit <clears throat> or being like untamed in a way like we we work for ourselves and um yeah, that, that really began at a super young age. It, it came through in different kinds of manifestations over the years. Um, but my first real, like, um, yeah, the first real form might have come in uh, working with my art. I started making ceramics in high school and when I got on the wheel, <clears throat> there was something in me that just clicked. It was like, oh, wow, yes, this is a channel that wants to be expressed. And, and acknowledging that channel, like the, 
the creations just like came through like rapid fire. And I think that's a quality that some and maybe all entrepreneurs share is like there's something inside of us that wants to be expressed. So yeah, it so started with my pottery. That's amazing. I feel like some people can have the opposite response when they get mm. creative, they like clam up around entrepreneurship. Mm. So when you started making your ceramics, did you initially like say, hey, I want to sell these? Excuse me. <clears throat> um, no, it was more of like, this is something that's coming through me. And eventually I was like, well, I have all these pots, like, <laughs> I guess I should sell them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's like, there's a strong force coming through me, I might as well capitalize on it so that I can feed this hobby of mine, or I can yeah. support this, this creation, this channel of creation. Yes. What yeah. was that like for you when you sold? Because this is, I'm, I'm so interested in this part. Yeah, um, <laughs> it really started when I was in college. Um, I also studied ceramics in college. And we would have like pottery sales at, <laughs> as like a collective with the group that I was in with our class, we would have pottery sales and, you know, everyone has all of their pots on the table and they're all kind of mixed matched. Um, but then how we identify who's, which ones are ours or with our inscription on the bottom and, and, you know, people just buy whatever i noticed that people really loved buying my pots and so i would always sell out at these little sales and my friends would want some and it, the the demand started to grow so then I, I just responded accordingly and um it was really like this i don't know if we're gonna get super into it but i'm a one three projector Mm -hmm. And um, this like theme of trial and error in my life is very strong. Yeah, I make lots of trials <laughs> and, and because of all the trials I make, I, I experience lots of failures, but this was not a failure. It was like a clear yes from the universe. And so I just kind of like followed that. What a beautiful and gentle like, <laughs> step into entrepreneurship I think that's wonderful because it's like you had a positive experience and then you had another positive experience and you mm -hmm. had another positive experience and it made you want to do more I think one thing that can be really difficult is to come from a rational place of like oh I want to start a business and so I have to do this and then we put so much pressure on ourselves to like execute things that we're, we may not be ready for or yeah. like we're not educated on the process so we have unrealistic expectations and then we put ourselves out there and we do something and it feels really vulnerable or we spend all this money on something trying because we think this is the right thing to do and um we skipped all these like one steps that you just like illustrated people i put it out there people really wanted it and right. then i received money for it and i made more yeah exactly and that that kind of speaks to like it's been a long process of me being an entrepreneur. It, it yeah. didn't just happen overnight. Like mm -hmm. I've making, I've been making pottery for 15 years yeah. and my, my pottery business still isn't where I would dream it to be. It's like, it's an ever unfolding process that really is for me an extension of my heart. And, and that's, it, it that's illustrated in, in this time span, first of all, like how long it's been taking to build up momentum, because for me, like my creation and my art, it has to come from my truth. It has to come from this like organic place of nurturing and tending this like this really special fire of creation. I notice that when I try to rationalize and really get in my head about like, planning and trying to force or or manifest what what I think should be or what I think my business should look like it I find that I run into even more hurdles 
And so when I kind of like sit back and trust the, the creative flow from within me and um, it, it tends to kind of like unfurl and, and I'm invited into these situations that not only refine my work, but bring opportunity to me. And that's been really my MO for entrepreneurship, which is totally organic and <laughs> unconventional. I might be one of the most unconventional entrepreneurs out there, um, but it, it feels most authentic to me. And, and I feel like that's the true key to my success is like having the true authentic expression. Totally. Can you give us an example of either when you've tried to force it or when it's something has flowed and what the outcome has been like just so that our listeners and um and well me too but yeah. i think i've seen this in your life in the last year that we've been friends yeah um but yeah just so that everyone kind of knows what totally you're um so for example i've taken a big break from pottery over the last two years mm -hmm. but before that like right before i took a break um I was in this place of like, you know, I really want to develop my business and my, my ceramics business, and I'm going to really pump out a lot of production. And um, I want to meet these goals of making this many per month. And I really believe that all of that is really healthy, especially when you have your systems in place. Um, but me being an artist, I feel there's a different code that wants to come through me and and two years ago i was at this point where i made a big collection and everything turned out really beautifully and i went to sell all of my pottery and it was like crickets i was like there's something in me that's caught up in my head right now and it's not seeing the the channel that wants to come through it's like i was so focused on like i have to make and create and sell and i was um out of touch of what was like the true need from my customers and my audience and um I was imagining like, oh, I, you know, I'm going to sell out of everything in one month and I didn't. And I you set all these expectations in my mind that really made me feel disappointed and like I was a failure in my business, which isn't true. It's just the expectations kind of set me up for that. And I feel like that's kind of like when we have all these expectations of that, that, that can be an easy thing to do with business and our rational minds. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's been a balance of like, okay, I'm going to plan and like curate and orchestrate this, this business of what I envision it to be, but I'm also going to leave my hands open and my heart open to guide me the true way. Mm. That's beautiful. I've seen you do that. Mm. What's really interesting too, is that, um, and this happens for me a lot, is that I see your work now that I know you better and now that I think it also has to do with you just taking a step back and being open and reevaluating. It's some of the most exciting work I've ever come across. And so I have no doubt that like when you're ready, when you when you are ready to come back into this and I already see you, you know, starting to make again that it's going to be wildly successful mm -hmm. um but sometimes like what you're sharing really resonates with me i i found it to be true for me too um is like the alignment piece and and i have a really strong willpower and i've seen it in you as well like you mm -hmm. you have a lot of discipline and a lot of willpower and i think for me sometimes i use that and i'm not open to like the messages that are coming in, mm -hmm. like you're saying, like my intuition or other opportunities that are actually perfectly aligned. But I'm like, no, it's not what I have in my mind. Yeah. 
it has to be this way and I'm so damn stubborn and sometimes it serves me and many times I miss out on other things because of it right so it's like the balance right it's mm -hmm. the divine almost like feminine masculine balance a hundred percent yeah so I'm really excited to see what you what you do with your ceramics soon because <laughs> every time I see your work I'm just like Oh my God, I get so ungrounded and it's like the gravitational force field changes. The, the gravitational force field pulls you in. It does. <laughs> um, yeah, about it. So. I have some really special creations coming through. I have no Part doubt. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I know that's a vulnerable share to, you know, for anyone to be like, I did this and it didn't work how I wanted and it made me feel like a failure. And so I just yeah. want to acknowledge you for sharing that with all of us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, do you want to tell us what your current offerings are? Uh, yeah. So um, not only do I make ceramics, but I also like in the same vein, um, I work really closely with the earth um, as I have a lot of farming experience and gardening experience. So I've kind of like wove that into this really special offering of, that I call the garden mentorship. It's a um, three month program where we like, you know, walk through, I, I, help, I help guide women and really all beings through a journey of building a garden and also like tending to the garden as a spiritual embodiment as a, as a reflection of our inner selves. Um, so it's, it's a garden journey, but it's also a spiritual journey, which is like <laughs> Maisie down here says garden mentorship. She was in it last year. And, oh yeah. She's one of the gems that came through. So yeah, the garden mentorship is a beloved creation of mine. I really feel like it's, um, it's an extension of who I am and back to the authenticity of our offerings. Like that's where the magic really comes through. So that feels super aligned. And, and then in tandem with that, I also make pottery and um, everything that I make happens to like come through in this version of um, a woman vessel. Um, I'm very much entranced by like the the goddess the ancient goddess forms um which has so much to do with mother earth so yeah those are the the two things that really are coming through most potently i also offer some like um special medicines also <laughs> <laughs> which are available. I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but there, there's more information on my website that yeah. feel free to check it out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Mary Ellen helped me build my garden and I have no gardening experience. <clears throat> and now when I meet people in my neighborhood, they're like, Oh, you're the person with the most amazing garden we've ever seen. And I'm just like, I don't, I literally have it on automatic sprinklers now. <laughs> like, I don't do anything except for pick food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I have this reputation and it's been so, um, so amazing. So if anyone is interested, like, I don't think there's anyone you could, you could probably learn some things from other people, but there's no one I would recommend more for to oh, learn this sure. stuff from, so. Thank you, Elena. Great time, yeah. Um, okay, so what are you most excited about for the future? Like in terms of my entrepreneurship and creations? Totally. Well, I'll give you like the, the, like, the dream version. Um, my like dream expansion version. Um, and I, yeah, I, I have this dream of having like a big epic property where um, I can create all the most magical gardens and shrines and temples like that just want to come through me. I really feel like I have this connection with the land where it speaks through me and I have lived on large pieces of land in the past and the relationship I've tended with that, that is like 
it's almost like a lover. It's like it, it, you, it feeds you and it enlivens this love within, within me. So um, my dream is really to have a piece of land. And this land is like a hub, not only for the spiritual development within myself, but the, that of others. And it's a space holder. It's a place for people to come learn and, and learn how to tend the land and learn how to tend the, like the garden within their hearts. So right now I feel like I'm producing a manifestation of that via the garden mentorship. Um, but I would really love to have something in person where people can come and retreat and have the full experience of what it's like to really be connected with the land, to be eating like vibrant, healthy, nutritious food, cleansing our auras of the chaos of the cities and, and also like interweaving the work of clay and um, the, the prayer of making ceramics is like, we we shape we can shape the earth with our intention and then we can fire it and turn it into this 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 momentum this like piece of significance and i think that is a really powerful ceremony for us to experience and so i also see that kind of weaving into the picture of the land and the love and the garden and the spiritual devotion I don't think I've ever asked you that question so directly. I think, so this is my first time hearing it and um, and I'm obsessed, I love it because every time I'm around you, I get that experience anyways, mm. because you're always offering fruit and vegetables that you've grown or that have been grown by someone else that are really delicious. And then we're like, I just feel like there's this presence, there's this peacefulness in your space Mm. Um, and there's, you know, the ritual of the tea and all the things. So it feels, I, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks for um, asking. Totally. <laughs> and, you know, from a practical point of view too, so that other people, um, I just want to use this as a teaching moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. Um, is that I think it shows a deep level of trust and love for yourself to have such a big vision and to accept it and embrace it. Because when we're scared, we, we don't go for what we think is quote unquote, not possible or things that we don't see the path to. Mm -hmm. But I think that part of, um, you know, cre actually stepping into huge manifestations like this is saying yes to the big vision and then taking the, the baby the steps, steps that are available to you now like you just exactly. said like the, the garden mentorship and I have goosebumps and the fact that like we do you know tea ceremonies all the time with your pottery with your ceramics and <laughs> it's you know and you're already selling and these are already available anyways I'm obsessed I just I think it's part of what makes you such a good entrepreneur Mm, yeah it's that authenticity right like really connecting into what it is what what is it what's the truth within us that wants to be sh shared um there's that side of the mirror and then the other side of the mirror is like what is the world needing what is the what is the world yearning for what what are the people around us like missing in their lives and how can we bridge that gap of like what's our true authentic code and what is the world needing and how can we really like meet each other in a true space of of realness and like of service really yeah um so it you know i haven't always known that this is exactly what i want to do or that the garden mentorship actually i did know the garden mentorship is something i wanted <laughs> to do for years um but the process of it actually coming into manifestation was like it was a deep trusting in myself like not only that I was going to be received, but that I was worthy or I like, you know, I had enough experience or that I was of value to others. That was all reflection work that I had to do within myself. Oh my God. Yes. Thank you for saying that because, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, 
the first time you go to sell something. And also I have to say that selling products in my former business, I sold products that my business partner made, which I kind of bypassed a lot of these things that you're talking about. And now in this business, especially going through like a program launch, which involves so much work on the forefront before you find out the results, like you just do all of this work for like a month and a half or more. And then with no, um, no idea whether or not you're going to have the results that you want or not. And the only way to find out is to do all the work anyways. And yeah. I mean, that, I think that's true even with product businesses too. It's just uh, less of a, a runway going into right. that. Right. Um, and a lot of these things came up for me as well. And I feel like the, I think I've heard your sister say this once where it's like the, the journey through is yeah. like the initiation or yeah. maybe it was you, I'm not sure. It definitely could have been something that Annette touched on. <laughs> um, do you want to share any, any of the things that came up for you? Um, yeah. Or what so, that experience, because you like, just launched for the second yeah. time. Third time. Yeah. Third so time. I just launched the garden mentorship for the third time, which was like the first time this year, last year I did two sessions Got it. and I learned a ton. It's like, kind of back to my experience of being one three and the mm -hmm. trial and error is like, it's, it's a real thing. I, I don't know if everybody experiences that, but it's a real thing in my, in my life. Um, it, yeah, I, I learned best through trial and error. So last year I, I had two successful garden mentorship launches. Um, for the most part, there were, there were so many things I learned. Um, and part of, part of what really helped me out this time around, I mean, actually, all of the times I launched, I worked really closely with Elena, um, with you, and, and that really helped me kind of like define my vision into this tangible offering and like what it is that the my audience really needs. So clarifying my ideal customer was a huge step for me. Um, and thank you so much for helping me with that. Um, and the refinement re process we went through this last time around, so this spring, was was cl so clarifying for me that once it kind of clicked, I was like, oh, okay, here's the message, and I'm just going to deliver it now. Like, there was this balance of like, okay, I want to get it out, like, this is the time, the rational mind, and then also trusting within my heart the the divine timing and like yeah. waiting for that exact moment that the fruit was ripe and ready to fall. Yeah. Did I answer your question or did I go off? I forgot my question. But okay, great. I like what you said. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I had um I, I opened up a cherimoya recently that was not ready. And I was like, no, because it's like $10, right? And it's like such a precious fruit. So I'm just like thinking about divine timing in that way too. It's like, you don't open the fruit too early. Yeah, <laughs> nature has that. so much to teach us. And that's kind of like the foundation of my existence. But yeah, <laughs> we worked a lot on your ideal customer. And I think that it's something that um, it's kind of like a secret weapon in business yeah. to focus on the ideal customer, because it's like, Oh, it's kind of heady ahead, like when you don't realize but what it does, I think is it creates limitations, which actually invites your creativity. I think yeah. that as entrepreneurs, we're so quick to say like, I want freedom, no limitations, but but that's not really what we want. What we want is some definition so that we can go deep with our creativity. And that's really what I found. Yes. Like that the, the ideal more, customer does. Yeah. The more you really harped on like niching and niching and niching and niching, I was like, I want the garden mentorship to be for everyone. I want my pottery to be for everyone. And you're like, no, no, Mary Ellen. Like, no. <laughs> the more specific we get, the better. And I, yeah. it was really hard for me to wrap my head around that notion. But once I did, I realized, like, the more specific I get, like, if I only make woman forms, then I'm that lady who only makes woman forms. Yeah. And I become iconic. 
and I become like the woman, right? The example you shared with us before was like, you don't go to get guitar lessons from somebody who plays every instrument in the orchestra. You go get gu guitar lessons from a guitar master, yeah. right? And um, the refinement of the niche really comes through in the ideal customer. Yeah. Uh, so a little plug for the ideal <laughs> customer workshop. Thank you. When it comes out or wait, is it out yet? Yeah, it's out. it's out. Okay, yeah. So the ideal customer workshop was amazing. I must say, um, I got to do the beta workshop with Elena, <laughs> but I also got to do one-on-one -on -one sessions, and they were amazing. So if you're in business, I'm just gonna like plug that in real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now I really forgot what the question was. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna look at my notes really quickly because we've. You know, I created a list of questions that we were going to go through and we've gone so organically. We're like, whoop, answer this one. Oh, we're up at this one. So <laughs> we've talked about so many wonderful things. Um, oh, yeah. We were talking about selling your products and how that can bring up a lot of stuff that would like to be healed. Right, right. Okay. And I feel like you answered that. Do you, do you have anything that left that you Well, like share? I said, like... I when the first time I launched my mentorship program, um, I faced thing, you know, I faced these beliefs within myself was like, am I worthy enough of sharing this information? Like, do people want to see me in a teacher position? I had to like, face all of these questions within me. And um, I think that's a really, really important part of the entrepreneurial um, journey is like is self-reflection because not only is it a, is it an offering for everyone else but it's an it's an invitation for us to step into these roles of sharing right I have two thumbs yeah and we it it's a honestly it's a journey of self-development totally it's a journey of like deciding that we want to step into a, a higher version or a greater version or you know another version of ourselves and first we have to initiate ourselves through that before we can initiate others yeah yeah so it can come through in so many different fashions for me it was you know it was a deep lesson of trust and um and I think for a lot of people, it has a lot to do with self-worth. Yeah. Self-worth, I think, is a real big one. Um, and, and it's such a personal and unique experience that uh, there's no um, formula for figuring that out. We really need to tune in with our own hearts and ourselves and our beliefs and kind of do the recoding before we can fully embody it. Yeah. It's, I think that the higher the profit on whatever you're about to sell, uh, the more self-worth comes up. Yeah. And if you're not aware of it, it comes in as like self-sabotage because it's not like, you know, if you don't, if you don't hear people talking about self-worth, you might just be in a pattern of like, self-sabotage and be like <laughs> have no awareness that this is what you're up against yeah absolutely is there anything that you um like you said for you is a lot about trust is there a mantra that you have or that came through at that time that you've integrated or like what helped you do yeah that trust? yeah um so it kind of comes back to the balance between the heart and the mind for me. Mm -hmm. um, our minds can create these stories. Yes, they can. <laughs> and they can latch on to the beliefs that we have, like, I'm not good enough, or they're not going to want my offering. Um, and it, it's really meditation. It's a, it's a practice of awareness of being like, okay, these thoughts are coming up and I see them, but am I going to choose to believe in them? Am I, am I going to choose to nurture these, these thoughts that are coming up? And in that, like that practice of meditation or awareness, I, I would see the thoughts that come up and then kind of like, okay, just let them float away because I, I want to be something else. 
I don't want to be those thoughts. I would come back into my heart and just like use my breath to bring me back into my body and trust that like true fire of inspiration and guidance that comes through me. Okay. Taking notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it was a, not necessarily a mantra that I spoke, but it was a mantra that of my breath of my breath and like bringing myself back into my body, into my truth. Cause my, I really feel that my, I keep like touching my heart. Like, I feel that my truth lives within my body. And, and then it's like communicated through my, my brain and my mouth with words, mm -hmm. but it's something that lives deep in my heart. And, and I can tell when I get heady and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. and I'm like, okay, I'm a little deep, like I'm a little um, like removed from what's here, what's real. Yeah, so, you know. I it, love that keeping the connection and the thread to the inspiration or the, the, the greater vision or the, you know, the true spirit that wants to come through, I think really is the, the most powerful piece in this. Thank you so much for sharing that, Mary Ellen. I think that's really helpful for me <laughs> too. Not, not too, but for me. Is, yeah. And also for hopefully for the people listening I love that um, that belief that the the truth and the magic is in your body, um, and that all we have to do is come back to the body and breathe into it and feel it yeah. to be reconnected. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that the people watching may not know about you is that you are great at executing. And this is a word that you use a lot. You're like, yeah, execution. Um, do, is this part of your trick <laughs> for execution? <laughs> um, Asking for myself. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. It's like not getting too heady, right? And just like mm -hmm. connecting to the vision. Okay, like here, I'll give you an example. Like I'm going to... <clears throat> create a new pottery collection that mm -hmm. I'm going to sell at a craft fair, like in three weeks. Mm -hmm. I could come up with all these ideas and like, Oh, like this and that, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to like do it. I'm going to come into my body, like let it be a meditation and I'm going to execute. I'm going to stay connected to the vision, use my body to breathe <laughs> and, <laughs> and allow the, allow the work and the process to come through me. I'm not gonna get too caught up with like, oh, should it look like this? Should it look like that? Mm -hmm. Like, does it need to be exactly this or this many numbers or, you know, I'm gonna allow the creation to come through and I'm stay connected to the vision. Mm. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. I think that's the recipe for success for anything, so. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for sharing that wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Mm, I don't know. That's like mic drop right there. I'm not really sure how to I follow know, right? up on that one. Um, hi to everyone in the comments. If you guys have a question for Mary Ellen that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw it in the comments. I see all these people saying hi, but yeah, Nadja, totally. Um, I haven't wanted to interrupt you, Mary Ellen, because you've been saying some like really profound things, but there have been so many people being like, what's up, what's up, hi, I love you yeah. guys. So <laughs> just yeah. want to acknowledge everyone and say, we see you and thank you for the love. Um, thank you for joining us on this. There was one question that we talked about before about mm -hmm. um, like growing up with examples of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And I can speak to that a little bit. Like I, I will say that both of my parents started their own businesses, um, which was a great like, example for me i i witnessed my parents especially my mother work so hard mm. she had <clears throat> three children and as soon as uh, you know maybe a year after my little sister was done breastfeeding my mom went back to get her graduate degree and she was working full-time three kids 
full-time student and she's like building her own business as a business consultant. Um, so she was, you know, staying up till midnight and waking up at three in the morning to get all this work done, drive an hour, do her work, come home. Like it was, it was outrageous and she's definitely a generator. So maybe it worked for her. No question. Um, <laughs> but my dad also worked really hard. And so I grew up with this notion of like, we get what we want and we work hard, you know? Um, and in a lot of ways, that thread was strong within me. But I, I do admit in the last couple of years, I have, I've done a lot of work to release that because I don't feel like working hard is really a reflection of the quality of offerings that comes through us. And mm -hmm. part of my, life's mission that has manifested in so many different fashions is quality over quantity. And um, so I, I may have come from a family of entrepreneurs, but I had to do a lot of decoding to release these patterns that weren't serving me in my authentic code. Yeah. You know, my parents still like, God bless them. Goddess bless them. <laughs> Um, they, they're still like, why don't you go get a job? And I'm like, they, they just, they can't see, they can't see that. Like, you know, they come from a different time, yeah. um, but spirit, like spirit comes through me and she brings abundance with her. And I feel so connected to that frequency and that's my authentic truth. And everyone's going to have their own unique authentic truth which you know comes back to things i've spoken on before um but yeah i want to let you know that like we all have we all have it within us to speak our truth and and it it may or may not come from an example of our parents because there's there's examples all over like we, we there's examples of entrepreneur successful entrepreneurs like at our fingertips via the internet and people around us. So there's, there's people that we can learn from. Yeah. Um, and I think learning from other people is really powerful. Oh, it's wow. not necessarily my um, path because I feel so sovereign and like there's such a unique expression that wants to come through me. But I, for a lot of people learning from others is, is really important, which is maybe why you're here right now, like <laughs> learning from us. <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there are a couple questions here that I just wanted to acknowledge. Um, well, before we do that, I just okay. uh, wanted to point out one thing is like for a lot of people, like we, we have all of this unconscious learning that we go through from our parents. Right. And so to hear you say that your mom like worked her ass off and is amazing at execution. <laughs> that was what I heard. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. does yeah. not surprise me at all that yeah. you're amazing at execution and also that like, that's kind of what we talked about before, which is where you have to overcome that. You have to overcome like your incredible willpower and your discipline and your focus yeah. to be able to receive sometimes. And that balance has been what's been great for you. Right, exactly. You know, I, I, I think it's uh, hilarious that having two parents who are entrepreneurs themselves, small business owners, they're like, you should get a job. <laughs> Things are working so well for you. <laughs> I did not expect that at all. Yeah, I yeah. that you were going to be like, no, they're both small business owners. And they're like, you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So it, it's a parent thing. They're just scared. It's a parent thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, it seems as if Lizeth asked a question. Mm -hmm. When faced with resistance, what are your go to's to get you out of a rut? So that comes <laughs> back to execution. Um, you know, uh, the rut, I really feel like is a mind block because the ruts and the resistance is all created in the mind um, and how we perceive the world. Like, for example, I just unloaded a kiln of pottery that I fired this weekend and maybe 10% of all the things that, that came out of the firing, like I'm happy with, maybe 10%. You could call that like a shit show. That could, I could perceive that as resistance, right? The universe is like, 
you're not good enough, whatever you want to say. Um, but I think when we like kind of alleviate those thoughts and perceptions and we can just really tune back into the greater vision, like what, what is the, the bigger vision, the, the bigger message that wants to come through. And if it helps you to make like a list of the, the baby steps of what it looks like to execute, like, um, you know, I, I've used the example of wanting to create a collection within the next couple weeks. Like, what does that look like? Like, I need to do this and that and prepare for the show in this way. And then just like taking little baby steps, like not making it this whole big thing. I have to create a collection in one day, but little baby steps intending to that inner vision and tending to that inner fire, I think can really help. So thanks for asking that question, Lizeth. Um, there was another question about your human design and how that's helped. Yeah, let's, um, Maisie says, Mary, what's your human design and how has learning more about yours helped you with your creativity? Um, that's a great question. So I am a 1-3 projector. Um, I take everything with a grain of salt. Um, so um, how do I say this in the right way? My sister um, is like a human design expert. She, her name is Sacral Secret on Instagram and she gives human design readings. So I've been blessed with a sister who has shared with me lots of information about my chart. Um, for projectors, I guess we want to wait for the invitation. And what that means for me is... Um, yeah, okay, I've definitely responded to invitations. Like Elena asked me to do this talk today and I was like, sure. Um, my This this sh collection that I'm birthing through was invited by, I was invited by a friend to um, to bring my, my art to an art show in a couple weeks. That was an invitation. I was invited by another person to apply for another art show and I really love responding to invitation. It feels like I'm being seen um, and I'm being asked to join, which feels like a very clear um, direction for me because I love to be in my feminine and I love to be kind of like riding the wave of least resistance. It doesn't feel in most authentic expression for me to get out there and like fill out all these applications for all these different kinds of shows and like really work, uh, work hard at getting at these opportunities. So I guess you can say I, I do my best to live by my design, but I also, you know, I, I, that's my experience and it's unique to me. I'm not sure what it's like to be a generator or a manifesting generator or a reflector for that. that. I hope that answers your question. I, yeah, I didn't ask it, so I can't say whether right. or not it was answered, but I think that was a great answer. Right, I mean, you're a projector, Elena. How would you say, like, how has learning about your projectorness um, helped you with your creativity? Yeah, I think on the, I have a tense relationship with it, you know, it's sometimes I'm like really into it. And I'm like, Oh, my God, this is like so enlightening. And I love all the questions that it brings up. And it's great for self reflection. And then sometimes I'm like, uh, but it tells me for the rest of my life that I'm gonna have limited energy and that I need an invitation in order to do what I want. And sometimes that doesn't feel good. Or it's yeah. just like, I'm like, am I buying into something that's going to limit me? That's going to limit the opportunities that I want? So yeah, I always enter it <laughs> with that in mind. Um, having said that, I, I love an invitation. <laughs> I melt <laughs> to invitations. So if anyone wants anything from me, just invite me. Um, <laughs> turn me into a little puddle on the floor. Okay, we have a question. Okay. I'm a projector too. What if you don't know what your mission or skill is that wants to be seen slash invited? Um, so how I would answer that is, 
is really, this is a matter of like tuning in with yourself and through meditation, through quiet time, projectors tend to need a lot of <laughs> alone time. Yeah, downtime. <laughs> and it, it, I can definitely relate to this. Like in the downtime, for me, that looks like weeding my garden or like just being in quiet with the birds and in my element or just like honestly laying in bed. I know that both Elena and I like to rest a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's in the quiet moments that the downloads really come. And I think you can um, ignite the downloads with the inquiry. So ask like spirit, what is it that comes through me naturally already? What is my service to the world? What is this? What is the offering that wants to come through my heart? And it might not be a, a clear, bright answer of like, this is it. You're here to serve this in this fashion but it might come in through like little inspirations here and there. And it's, it's attending. It's like, it's one seed that's sown. And then you have to like nurture and water the seed to grow up to be a, a flower. And then the flower makes more seeds. And then now you have a hundred seeds and this, like the momentum builds slowly over time. So it's a trust. It's really, I feel like this um, relationship we build with, with the universe and learning how to trust the guidance through our hearts. Would you like to add anything to that, Elena? Thank you for the invitation. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said. And I just the whole time I'm thinking, yeah, and execution. Yeah. Yeah, execution. And I think but you may take like, that for this is this is in um in discovering what the mission is, right? Yeah, but I think that like, so for me, my intuition is activated when I have experiences to draw from. Okay. I like to think of my experience or my intuition as something that, well, for anyone that you can build. And that um, like what we're talking about is an inner knowing here. And I think that does come from your intuition. It's, it's like self-realization. I think there's other ways of doing it too, um, but it's not in a vacuum. And so like for me, the more experiences I am open to, then when I nap, <laughs> like my subconscious is drawing from all of them and I can have clarity from that and wake up from my nap with like a new clarity. And I'm like, oh, it's this simple. And that happens whether you nap or through like weeding a garden, absolutely. It's like that, that, that relaxed state where there's no tension and there's no force. And this is true, I think for anyone, human design aside, um, is just being able to have space to integrate our thoughts together and like hold deeper questions. Like that doesn't really happen when we're stressed or when we're like drinking coffee, going out and like conquering the world. It happens in the quieter times. Um, so I absolutely agree with what you said. And I think that in our, in our culture, we're so driven. It was so much, there's so much emphasis on the doing and uh, it sounds cliche for me to, like, I hear myself sounding cliche saying this, but I think that everyone can benefit from having time down. So what you're saying is absolutely, you know, the truth, especially if you are, um, like, busy, busy, busy all the time. But I do think that it's, it's, it's the marrying of the two that allows us, because it's like we get so much clarity from mistakes, yeah. you know? We get so much clarity and I'm using mistakes lightly because I, I think that like it's actually just um, like clarity that that's not what we wanted. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, that Opportunity wasn't for refinement. Yeah. And it's activated through downtime, through reflection, whether we're like journaling it out or just like meditating on it. I think that's the most powerful for me. Yeah, it's such a good question. Okay, I have, um, I think, one final question for you, Mary Ellen. Oh, I have so much, but no, I think this is good. What's one piece of advice that you can share with artisans um, who are just starting off in their business journey or are feeling 
like they're having a hard time. Yeah. Okay. With entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, thank you for asking that question. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me that question actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. So first of all is like stay connected to your vision. Secondly, like release your expectations because nothing's going to go as you like the way you planned. A hundred percent. I love it. <laughs> um, and nothing's going to turn out the way you envisioned it. Right. But allow what wants to come through to come through. So release, mm -hmm. uh, stay connected to your vision, release your expectations. And thirdly is like, trust the inspiration. It's like when you're moved by something, when you're really moved to create or yeah, to create, like trust that flow because that is the most sacred divine energy, the inspiration. Like when you're moved by something, like allow that to come through you because that is your inner self. That is the truth of who you are. And when you can balance those three aspects, the vision, releasing expectations and really acting on the inspiration, like you, you can tend to this and yeah, back to releasing expectations. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, this is like a, a journey you're on. It's not a, a quick transformation. It's a, yeah, a, a journey. And to accept that you're on the journey, I think is really powerful. I love that advice. I'm going to transcribe this and turn that into a quote. <laughs> and I'm going to quote you on my Instagram. Are you ready? Is that okay? I totally, I'm totally, I, in it. yeah. I'm, I, I think you're so elegant with words <laughs> and eloquent. Um, thank thank you. you for sharing that. I think there's so much wisdom in it. Thanks. Um, there's one more question or something that Nadia says is I have one I'm working with a lot lately. What's the art want to say? That's a great, great, great question. Yeah. That's a great inquiry and allow that to be something that you hold open. That's something I do when I write poems is I just open and I'm like, what wants to be expressed. Mm. And I think that can be a really great practice for someone who's learning how to tune into the inner voice. It's like just open, opening and asking what wants to be expressed, what wants to come through. Thank you, Born to be Wild. Yay. Thank you everyone <laughs> for being here. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, if you have a question that we didn't get to, send it to me, me or Mary Ellen and um, we'll share it in the stories. You know, I'll make yeah. sure that she gets it or, you know, vice versa. And I would love your feedback, um, you know, either in the comments or you can DM me about, um, about this series that I'm hoping to do. So if you have someone that you would like to hear from or if there's a question that upon reflection, you're like, oh, I really would have loved to know this. Um, my intention with these series and with Mary Ellen, I'm just so grateful that you are the first person um, in this. I think this was amazing and I just really <laughs> appreciate you sharing yourself and your heart so openly. Um, is, you know, one of the things that I wanna do is break this idea that entrepreneurship is something that you need an MBA for, I think. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> and there's many MBAs who actually are very jealous of people who have stepped into entrepreneurship on their own because we have all this um, experience that they don't have. So it's not about intellect. I think a lot of it is about energetics. And I do think that there is so much that um, comes from the more feminine essence. And as artisans, you have so much um, so many secret weapons that are really powerful in business. And, you know, Mary Ellen has just shared like so much of that. Um, 
And then the last part is about creating a relationship with yourself as an entrepreneur. And what does it mean to build that identity? Because at the end of the day, business, you know, there's so many ways we could make money. Entrepreneurship is just one of them. I'm excited by the people who are looking to use it as a way of getting in touch with their higher self and using it as a way of healing all like all these different areas of your life and just experiencing yourself in this new way. Um, and there's a lot of growth that happens there. And I think that it's a very different mindset from, you know, just hyper focusing on the money. And that's really turns off a lot of artisans to begin with anyways. So my mission is to <laughs> tell all these artisans, there is a place for you in business. Like the, the world needs what you offer. I need, I'm so excited by what you offer. And, um, you know, thank you, Mary Ellen. I think you're just such um, a perfect example of that. Mm. Thank you, Elena. Yeah, wow. The service <clears throat> and the energy you share with us all is such high quality. Like, I just want to say thank you for the refinement that you bring mm -hmm. to this world and the service of, helping artisans refine their work also like you really create an invitation for everyone else that you interact with to step up to this like frequency that that is so beautiful and profound and so thank you for stewarding me on that journey and inviting me into this space thank you yeah okay on that note i think we're done yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Perfect ending note. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.